Welcome to Live Like Water Teas. I'm Michael Chihoy. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about green tea, specifically Korean green tea. I spent three years living in Korea researching different potters and different tea farms and learning the processes. Um, I fell in love with Korean tea houses, I fell in love with Korean green tea, and I think you will too. The Korean green teas are gentle. They're also baked, which gives it a distinct uh, flavor to the tea. Really, historically, it's the same tea that you will find in Japan that makes the sencha. The main difference between Korean and Japanese green tea is the fact that Koreans will bake their teas when they, when they finish picking them, and the Japanese tend to steam it. Traditionally, I think the, the story goes something uh, the monks would go to China to study Zen, to study Buddhism, and they came back with the tea plants, but they came back with two different ways of processing. Now, the Korean green teas that I sell come from GD Mountain. GD Mountain. I've met the farmer. Uh, it's him and his wife. He has a small plantation, a small, well, I wouldn't even say plantation, a small tea field, and he is certified by the Korean government, so it is organic and wild. Now, I do not have any other stamp that says this is organic, so I'm not selling this as an organic tea. I'll just make that clear. But I do know that this, this gentleman and his wife, um, they're very passionate about the teas that, that, that they produce. Now the thing is, the teas are wild, which means they don't grow in rows. They don't grow in rows and they're not harvested by machine. And what he explains to me is that this makes the whole difference in the, in, in the tea taste. Uh, having teas that are picked by hand in a certain way, I mean, otherwise another shoot will not come out. It has to be twisted off in a certain way. Uh, it has more minerals and it has more nutrients in the tea. Okay. Uh, the women that, uh, that pick the tea, uh, they work seasonally and what happens is uh, they, they walk amongst you know, the, the tea fields and it's quite interesting because you find the bush and then you sit down and they have these little seats that are kind of hooked to the back so they can sit down and they have a pouch in front and, and they pick the teas. So that's, that's a little bit of uh, how, they're, you know, how they are uh, harvested. Now, one, two, three. Uh, this is a good principle to, to keep in mind. The first flush, before April, before the rains. This tea is very, very fine, uh, it's delicate, and it's more expensive. So it's, it's as simple as that. Um, that would be the Wujang, okay? Not in this picture right now. We don't have it here. We drank it all. <laughs> uh, second one, uh, the second flush, or the second pick, is called Sejak. And Sejak uh, also translates to as sparrow's tongue. And again, the leaves are just a little bit larger, but they're small. And, you know, the, the idea of a, of a sparrow's tongue, it's small and it's, and it's delicate. The third flush would be Dejak. Okay? And, uh, ooh, sorry, Junjak. Dejak would be the fourth, and we no longer get Dejak, um, just because they don't, they don't harvest that anymore. So Junjak would be the, the, the last harvest that I, that I offer my, my clients, okay? Normally the teas come in little packages like this, okay? They're already prepared all uh, in Jiri San. Uh, 35 to 40 grams. The, the Junjak is uh, 35 grams. The Sejak and the Wujun, the first and second harvest, are, um, are 40 grams. How to make the tea? It's so simple and yet it's so complex. Um, but what I suggest is use a small teapot. Now I, I love the Korean teapots and like I said, I mean, um, I've gotten to know the, the potters in Korea so it, it's, you know, it's a special treat to have your own favorite teapot. And I leave that ritual to you. And basically what I would suggest is warm up the, the tea vessel with the teapot, add hot water to it, um, just so that the temperature you know, makes, makes it warm. How much tea? Well, that's really up to you and how much, uh, how many steepings do you want to, or how many infusions do you want to make? I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. And of course, putting too much will not 
yield a, a better taste, especially in the teapot. I mean, it, it will become a, a stronger taste. So keep that in mind. So what I would do is I would start with a, with a teaspoon, okay? A tea, teaspoon of tea. Now with the Korean teas, it is suggested that you pay attention to the water temperature. Water temperature, okay. Junjak or Dejak, the last one, uh, the, the fourth flush, 70 degrees uh, on average. So some people have these water thermoses or these water urns that well, you'll just put the setting on and then you could uh, press the button and you'll have the water that's meant for green tea or for an oolong tea or for, for, for a black tea. So, you know, there's that option. I don't suggest you use a thermometer and measure it to be so exact. Get into the, get into the habit of using intuition and, and really connecting with the tea process and the tea steeping. I mean, this is, this is a meditation in its own right. Let the water cool, and once you let the water cool, then infuse the, infuse the tea leaves. And what I suggest is, do a quick infusion. Infuse it for 30 seconds, infuse it for 20 seconds, and then decant the tea, and then drink that. After you decant the tea, be sure to take a moment to really smell the fragrance of the tea. The, the aromas that, 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 that are emitted. I mean, this is just wonderful. It's a great way. It's aromatherapy. It's free. Well, you got to buy the tea, so it's not exactly free. Uh, it's a great way to, to connect. And I'm telling you, if you use your imagination, if you've been to Korea or you've seen some of my pictures online, you can envision yourself there. Uh, it really, and, and remember, I mean, the whole... Our senses are so powerful, so it, you know you have that potential to to go that far. Travel without traveling, especially during this pandemic. Okay, um, take the time. Do smell the, the the tea leaves. Okay, for me, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? I mean, it's really a personal thing, and people who uh, uh, you really need to come up with your own words to describe. For me, it's like a field. For me, it's 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 like when the uh, when the when the field is cut, the the it's it's mowed, it's it, it's it's something like that. But again, find what works for you, and then you know that becomes a layer of, of your experience. So okay, so I suggest steep it for for thirty seconds, decant the tea, and then drink it. All right. Now you could make several infusions, um, three, four, five. Each time you could you could add five seconds to the tea to the infusion. You could add longer, and then once you've had maybe three four infusions, well then the last infusion let it steep for longer. Let it steep for five minutes. Let it steep for ten minutes. Don't be afraid to to push it to see what really works for you to get one more cup of tea out of out of the leaves that you have. Okay, so again, one two three. All right. You have uh, Wujang, the first pick. You have Sejak, the second pick. Okay, the second flush, Sparrow's Tongue. And you have Junjak, and Junjak is the third pick. And this is the one that I usually buy the more of because it's a great introduction to uh, to the Korean teas. Okay, I suggest start with the with the Junjak, and then if you want, you let me know if you're really interested in the Sejak or the Wujang, the first and second pick. I import less of these. I have my regular clients. I know who, who really wants them, and I make sure that every year that they get you know get their supply. Now remember, once the season for harvesting is over, that's it for the year. We wait till next year, and every harvest is a little bit different from year to year. All right, something something to to keep in mind. So again, Michael Chihoin from Live Like Water Teas, and this has been a little introduction into the Korean teas that I sell from GD Mountain. Thank you, and enjoy a great cup of tea.